I'm searching for the perfect rig, not too small, not too big, one that gives me room to move, and a big old shower, and a ride that's smooth. I got me a couple of rigs to find, and so I can hit the road and ease my mind. Yeah. Let me drive, let me drive. Oh, hello everybody. It's uh, it's future Jason. I just wanted to break in here and uh, say these videos were made, uh, uh, boy, last last late summer, fall, and I on purpose, stacking them up. Uh, um, and most of you probably didn't know this was happening, and that was on purpose. Anyway, um, I'm continuing here. It's uh, May of 2021 now as I record this and release this week's video. And I thought rather than, you know, just play last week's video, uh, last week, play the next video in series, I should probably just jump in and, and say, hey, um, this is future Jason and um, things are um, um, progressing and uh, uh, I look forward to uh, putting out more videos. Thanks for liking and subscribing. Now back to your regularly scheduled uh, video. Um, see you next week. So in my... Uh, first vid, this being the second vid, um, step two. Uh, last week I, I talked about all the processes leading up to the decision and uh, in this vi video I'm going to talk about, about, well, how do you, how did I narrow down what I was going to end up living in? So that's what I did. I like the old hat old dirty baseball hat. Some famous blues player wrote blues up on this thing and I haven't cleaned it since, but anyway. Um, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Go back to the first one, like that one. Subscribe. If you find it interesting, share. Um, so, what do I know about RVs? And the answer two months ago was pretty much nothing pretty much didn't know a damn thing about RVs um, you know there are a certain amount of truths that you can probably uh, apply to owning an RV um, a it will have problems um, you know uh, so many of them are built really cheaply and they look really nice but they're not very well constructed uh, just go look at uh, RV accident photos or videos on YouTube um, they're not they're not safe in some ways so you know and unless you can spend the really big bucks on an RV you're gonna end up with one of the ones that are built a little cheaply or you might have to go back in time and get a used RV from one of the better quality manufacturers uh, and of course the older you go the cheaper they get and the more t more potential problems you have you know also, the way they're designed, the way they're manufactured, you're going to have a compromise. Um, you know, I'm going to face several in my decision-making process. That's okay, um, um, because there's a compromise no matter what you do. Um, you know, and another reality is whatever you pay for the rig, it's going to be worth less the minute you hand the money over. It's going to be worth less than it was the, before you did. Um, and then as you go by in time, you will lose even more value. Um, you know, a $100,000 rig that was bought uh, 20 years ago, if you could get 20 for it now, you'd be lucky. Uh, so, yeah. Um, and depending on the condition. Uh, well, we can get into that later. Um, you know, uh, so, you know, it's going to be, you know, unless it's a bargain that's just junk to begin with, and I... I just don't see myself stripping uh, an old Winnebago down and rebuilding it. Um, it just sounds like problems. Another fact that I've learned is that, you know, 70 to 90 percent of the time, you're not going to be moving in this RV. It's going to be stationary and you're going to be living out of it and not moving it. Um, I think if I wasn't planning to be full time, that would be maybe a little different. Maybe that you, you know, as people that use an RV more for holiday, you know, it's, it's, or they're going on vacation, you know, they're going to go on vacation for a month or two, but they're going to be moving a lot more. 
um, I plan on staying in, in, in staying put for weeks at a time, if possible, where possible. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, make make choices based on living in it versus you know driving it. Although you know, <laughs> don't short yourself uh, on the driving aspect. Um, you know, because that's that's where the, that's where the big letdown's going to be. Is you know, um, it's not likely going to be when you're just sitting somewhere. It's going to be when you're in from going from point A to point B and something goes wrong. Whether it's you know a tire or an engine part or alternator or yeah, who knows what. I uh, hope that traffic's not too loud. I think last week it uh, turned out pretty good that it wasn't. So you know, then, then so you get into this, and it's like class A, class B, class C. What the hell is all that? Well, um, real quick, class B is a van that's been expanded to be more than a van with a taller roof and maybe a little bit longer body, etc. Um, a class B is a van front end that then has a big box put on the on the back, and then maybe one of those overhangs off the front uh, over the cab where a, a bed is up over there. And um, a Class A is where you take a standard truck frame and you build an entire box and set up on top of it. And those are the big, uh, big ones. Um, one of the other differences is that um, in a Class C, you're looking at a, a gross vehicle weight up to about 16,000 pounds. And in a small Class A, you're looking up to about 20,000 pounds, depending on the model and the manufacturer. Um, so it's like, well, who builds these damn things? And God, what? Um, that's that's a real so yeah in trying to figure out what's what I asked a few people um, and a couple answered you know well, what is a good RV who makes the better RV and there are names that get tossed out there that are um, you know Tiffin may be one of the top names um, and uh, you know they really are you're talking these class A coaches that are running two three four five six seven eight hundred thousand dollars and they are extremely well built Granted, I think if one of those were to hit a brick wall, they would fall apart just as quickly as any of the other Class A's, although over the long term, they're going to wear and tear better. They're not as creaky. They don't, you know, they're just better. More time and energy is put into their manufacturer and more quality of components are put into um, to it begin with. So, you know, um, so, you know, when you're looking at RVs, a brand is a, is a huge thing. The problem is, is that it's very incestuous there may be I, I you can't really there is buyouts after buyouts after buyouts so you've got what used to be many brands now down to lesser brands although the names are still there and then you have you know manufacturer a and then they have seven different levels of models inside that and going down to slightly less you know um it it, it takes a lot of deciphering um there are manufacturers that have reputations for high quality items. There are manufacturers that have reputations for not so high quality. Um, you have aluminum sides or some sort. You also have fiberboard sides of, you know, where it's just vinyl clad. And you see RVs running down the road and they have those bubbles all on the side because water has gotten in there or some other manufacturing defect. And, and it, yeah, it doesn't look good. Um, one of the other considerations some people have, which I can't imagine, is gas mileage, because it doesn't really matter. You're going to be hauling, you know, 15, 20,000 pounds of, of, of motor coach down the road, and it's going to get somewhere between 7 and 10, 12 miles a gallon if you're lucky. You're not moving all the time. Gasoline consumption is not a major priority, because um, it's going to suck no matter what you do. So you get investigating RVs and you get looking at, well, what does everybody else say about them? What, what are, what is it that, and I've asked this a lot in forums, what is it that you wish you had done? What is it you wish you hadn't done? And of course there are a gazillion different um, YouTubers out there doing videos on, you know, how to make the right decisions about all of these things. Um, but what you don't find a lot of is there's not a lot of name and shame. Um, nobody's saying, look, Brand X has a pretty poor reputation. The fact is most of them, but the reality is, is if you buy a brand new RV, uh, the reports are you're gonna spend the first year to two years going back and forth to the place you bought it from or the manufacturer to get all the things fixed that were wrong with it because they can't be bothered to put them out correctly in the first place. So how do you decide what RV do you buy? Um, thankfully, I don't have enough money to buy a new one, so, um, it's not going to be an issue for me. Whatever has happened 
will have happened to the previous owner or owners. So, you know, I started looking at, all right, how do I draw a line at what I want, what I don't want? And so I thought, well, I don't probably can't afford anything newer than 14, 2014, so I won't look beyond that because it would be ridiculous. And I probably don't want anything older than somewhere around the 95 to 97 range when the newer model Ford V10 came in and or the better Chevrolet engines and transmission combos came in. So, um, again, another whole layer of uh, research to figure out, you know, well, what does it mean if I buy a 96 versus a 99 in this particular model when everything looks the same? And so um, that's where digging into the chassis uh, numbers and figuring out, you know, which one is which. And basically, if you treat them right, they'll both do fine. Um, it does look like almost every eight-cylinder motorhome is underpowered, and you will have to baby it going up hills. Um, you know, I want one that's less than 30 feet. There are, uh, the way it was, I, I found a better explanation on this 30 foot thing. A lot of the national and state parks are fairly old and they were built for tenting. And um, as times went on, these sites were expanded a little bit in order for trailers and tent trailers and tow behinds and small motorhomes to fit in. But the sites are at the base uh, small and <clears throat> the areas and roads are tight and small so that it is a uh, you're just not going to fit a 40 foot rv in some of these spots and that's why they say 30 foot and under <coughs> so that's what i'm looking for i'm looking for a 30 foot and under rv there aren't in the used market most rvs are in that 32 30 foot and up range i could have i could have my pick of any make model or manufacturer through the last 15 to 20 years if I wanted a 35, 40 foot rig, but I, I don't want one that big. Um, you know, when you're going down at U and you get to the bottom and you then you transition up, that overhang is gonna hit uh, if that is too steep. Um, so when looking at um, an RV with that big overhang, it's gonna limit where you're gonna be able to get to. Uh, Diesel would be nice, but diesel adds anywhere from five to twenty-five thousand dollars to the cost of an RV just from the get-go. Um, so, you know, I could I could change plugs, I could do things on a gas motorhome. I don't think I could do much with a diesel other than change the oil and the and the filters. Um, whereas on a gas motorhome, I could take the doghouse off and I could do a lot of the work. I could change injectors, change belt, alternator. I could do a lot of that work. Um, the diesel, there's a Chevrolet diesel plan, a 6.5, that I just, I think I want to stay away from. Um, so, yeah, and also with the V10, uh, if you can find the V10s, they just tend to, or the higher output uh, Chevy V8s, they don't struggle as much when you're going on, when you're really putting the strain on it. And, you know, that's going to matter in the long run. Um, I'm six foot four. I can't, I need a shower that I can move around in. You know, I'm, I'm not <clears throat> thin, but I'm not, you know, grossly overweight either. But I, I want a shower that I doesn't, you know, I mean, living in this thing. I, I don't want a shower that's, that's too cramped. Um, I need a small office space, maybe a way to set up my recording gear for doing more sound recording down the road. Um, I want a garage or some other way to mount, mount a motorcycle or a small motorbike on it. Um, yeah, the garage thing kind of went out the window. Toy haulers just are too big. Um, that, that, that garage space is, it takes up too much living space. You know, page one. Um, you know, the, the fridge freezer has to be a standard uh, hybrid gas electric uh, so that it can run no matter where I am. Um, you know, when I'm boondocking, I really don't want to be running on electric. Um, hopefully the rig I get will have a large propane tank. Um, so I settled on a Class A, but why did I get rid of a Class C? And um, primarily space above and below. Uh, Class A frame is built up higher. There's more underneath storage. There's more storage in the rig, up front in the cab area. You have a full cab going all the way out with generally cabinets across the top. Whereas in an RV, the you know you just don't have that space. Um, and you're talking uh, if you're talking a rig that's 26, 28 foot end to end, um, you get more usable space out of a Class A than you do a Class C. 
Um, the wheelbase isn't any different. They're both 158 inch wheelbases. When you get below 28 feet, the Class E's and the Class A's both have about 158 inch wheelbases. Although the Class A has a lot more weight capacity as I said earlier. So, um, also, Class C's are hard to find. There are not a lot of used Class C's out there. Uh, their price, the price is high. Uh, I could get way more Class A for the dollar in a Class A than I can for Class C. Um, and again, like I said, they have a shorter wheelbase. Um, and the Class C's just don't carry as much, you know. Um, so for years I've been watching people sail around, uh, at least two, three years, been watching people sail around the world on their sailboats. Um, you know, which uh, thanks to Gone with the Winds turned into watching uh, uh, people in RVs <laughs> run around the country. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things I've been looking for a change, looking for a new direction in life because I'm really bored with corporate America and the whole chase the dollar thing that uh, we do in this country. And I'm, I'm done with it. I am just done. So as a full-timer, everything I have is going to be in the rig, and therefore I need as much storage space as possible. I also want to do a uh, off-grid solar system. That means that I'm going to need to um, put a bigger, better solar system in, which means a bigger battery bank, which means more space for that, etc. So, <clears throat> you know, looking at all the brands and the models is just daunting for the uninitiated. There's just so much to to know in order to make a good decision. You know, just understanding everything I've already mentioned took just hours and hours and hours of, of digging and comparing. You know, um, last week I talked about uh, my ideal model being a Fleetwood Flare 25, 26 foot model. Um, and uh, because of the budget I was working with, and I said, you know, I'm waiting for my realtor to get to me. And my realtor um, and I had a conversation last week. And my budget's a little higher than it was, which is which is maybe perhaps a good thing. Um, a, I can get into a slightly better rig. B, I will have a larger cushion to work with once I do. And both of those things are very good, especially that cushion. Um, I am uh, currently talking with someone out in the Seattle, Washington area about a, an RV. But A, I, I, again, the house has to get sold before I have the funds to buy the RV. It's in Seattle. How do I then transition from the house to the RV when the RV is in Seattle. Um, it's a 2003 model uh, and it has 160,000 miles on it and that's the big scary point right there. You know, Single owner, very well maintained, but 160,000 miles. Um, and they want a lot of money for it. Um, uh, it's going to need new tires on the back end. It's going to need new house batteries because those are four years old now, which means you know um, it hasn't been moved. It hasn't been used regularly for three years, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So um, there's a lot of scary points in that, and that's what I told the, the seller. And I said to him, you know, look, I can't make an offer right now anyway, but if I would, it would be this because of these issues. And thank you very much for putting up with me. So. Um, as a result of, of the conversation with the realtor, there's another model range that I'm looking at, which is uh, made by a company called Safari. Um, they started building coaches back in 92, I think, and they kind of fizzled out after they got bought out in 2001, 2002, and uh, then they got, uh, basically, when 2008 hit, they, they died. So there is the Safari Trek, which was the very first model they used. Um, they're extremely well built. They have aluminum siding. They have an aluminum box frame underneath them. I'll throw a picture up here of that box frame structure. Um, again, they have an all aluminum frame up and over with aluminum siding. Um, so there's none of the water intrusion issues you have with a lot of the cheaper RVs. So good aspect. Um, they also, they have a con. They had a concept. A guy wanted a concept where he could offer everything you would want in a that you've got in a larger RV, but in a smaller form factor. And uh, he tried. He was trying for Daisy. Come here. She wants to play ball. Um, and uh, yeah, really high quality unit. Um, very well built. Uh, very well designed. And so um, that, that one of those is now in my target and they're for sale all over the country. There's one uh, about 60 miles that way from me. 
um, that uh, I'm going to go look at sometime in the next week, I think. So it's, it's got ample storage both above and below uh, that steel, you know, chassis that you come from the manufacturer with the aluminum truss work in there. Um, they have these at 24 and 28 foot models. I would consider one of each of those. They're really 26 and about 29 and a half foot. Um, you know, they do something that uh, other rigs don't do and it becomes really apparent, you, you know, when you virtually walk in the door, which I haven't actually been in there myself, but I've seen thousands of pictures. Um, God, that was dramatic. Thousands of pictures. And it becomes apparent the minute you walk in the door, you look around and uh, um, there's no bed. There's no bed room. To your right is um, a chair, and then there's the co-pilot seat, and then there's the pilot seat over there, and behind the pilot seat is a couch, and then, you know, kind of across from the couch, and then over there is the, the kitchen area with a nice L, and beside you is a little dinette, and then you look back down the hallway, and you can see the sink of the bathroom, and you turn around the corner, and there's the shower and the toilet, and there's no bed. Um, what the guy who came up with the with the Trek design did was he um, he was looking for a way to uh, uh, suspend the bed in the ceiling and have it only come down when you use it but he just couldn't figure out a good system to make that work well. Um, his wife and him were, at a, uh, were uh, at a fancy hotel in Las Vegas and he picks up the remote from the TV and it says TV up, TV down, TV up and up pops the you know large screen TV and he's going well that's pretty cool. Um, hey, Honey, honey, come here. And he puts it down, and then he has his, his wife stand there, and he sits on the TV. And he says, honey, put it up. And he, up, and up comes the TV and lifts him right up off. And he does it again, and he tries to hold it down with all his weight, and he can't. So he ends up taking the back of this unit apart and finds the name on the motor in the back and figures he's got it got it made, uh, got with some people to create these tracks to for the bed to ride up and down on, and boom, he's got this bed that hides up in the ceiling when you're not using it. So that's, you know, gosh darn, that's, that's a lot of room that's not being used. Um, and it has... The, the, it has some of the largest uh, shower stalls of, of anything I've seen out there in this size. Usually you either, in a really small rig, you have what they call a wet bathroom, where everything gets wet when you take a shower. The sink, the toilet, the floor, everything around you gets wet, which, you know, they, it just is a bad idea. These have uh, enclosed showers with a glass door. Um, if you get the right model track, it actually has a, um, instead of a square, uh, it has kind of like a, a triangle shaped shower so there's a little more room for the elbows um, you know and when you look at this this design one of the pieces of wisdom that you learn going through this process is that um, you have you're gonna be living in this space and most of that time you're not driving um, and when you're not on the move a third of the day you'll be spent asleep so when you're asleep you're not really gonna care <laughs> you're just gonna be asleep so what do you care about the space you're in you know you're, you're as long as your bed's comfortable um, so when you're awake in the thing most of the time indoor driving most of the time, when you're awake you're not in the bed so why do you need a bed when you're not a, you know get rid of the thing so um, yeah what are the beds that come down uh, Murphy beds are, are a big thing now um, so similar idea but the bed comes down over the uh, as you walk in you have the maybe two little lounge chairs and the couch and it comes right down to about uh, this high off the ground um, and there's your bed queen size bed boom <coughs> and uh, the inventor called it an electro magic bed um, and uh, so it's an intelligent use of space and I really 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 like that that makes so much sense to me um, in my house the door used to be on the way over here and then uh, so on one side like on one side of the house you had the front door and then as you came across the front of the house on the inside you had the stairwell so there was an area at the base of the stairs you can't use because it's in front of the stairs and there's an area over by the front door you can't use because it's um in, you know it's in front of the doors because it's got to open what i did when i remodeled the front of the house is that i moved the door to the bottom of the stairs and now those two areas share the same dead space over here right? so uh, i appreciate uh, efficiency of space um you know how do you get more room without slides 
you put the bed out of the way and now you have the area that that was taking up a good you know six foot by five foot or you know the width of the coach by um, you know it's a five by it's a huge area 30 square feet that you don't need to be carrying around with you if the bed is up in the ceiling so it's a, a intelligent use of space um, you know there's a whole lot of other things that the track does which uh, are really good um, so that's that's the target and yeah no slides so that that's it also you know um, on the downside it doesn't really, it's gonna be a used RV you know and it's gonna come with bugs and problems um, but starting with a unit that's better built to begin with it's gonna reduce the amount of potential issues you know um, so that's where we are hey Daisy come here come here come here come here get the ball come here and say hi come here Daisy come she does not want to she's just gonna sit over there it's too hot it's too hot oh, it's been like 90 degrees all day and I wanted to make this video yesterday but it was just too darn hot outside um, so there's my criteria I want something less than 30 feet that really maximizes my living space and the Safari Trek is really uh, oh I should mention that um, the holiday uh, traveler um, the company that bought out uh, Safari in 2001 to in 2003 came out with a model that basically was the was the Safari track but called it Hol uh, holiday traveler so there is also that all uh, uh, model that I can look for but you know what would you suggest what, what, what do you think is, is is something that would fit what I want to do um, maybe I'm missing something you can tell me it um, anyway if you like the video like subscribe um, please and uh, you know throw me lots of money if you want to but uh, so yeah the, the meeting with the banker went really well I'm, I'm really really happy about that so uh, but now um, you know the house back there needs lots of work and uh, get it listed in a month or so and uh, get it sold by mm, beginning of October maybe end of October um, and then I can you know really start being serious about the move and everything else all right, so uh, we'll see you next time. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, this is the RV Knot. Oh, the name. I forgot. <laughs> yeah, RV Knot. Um, I've also got a Facebook channel. Um, so, again, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Where's that ball? Where's that ball? What are you doing? Where's that ball? I'm going to get it. You found the big ball. You found the big ball. Found the big ball. Where was it? It's been missing all winter. Oh, jeez. Big deal finding a big ball.